Hello everyone, I'm back on the Homer website. Uh, it's homer-fnearst.org. Uh, this is my second video about the default processing stream in Homer. Uh, I have Homer up and running right here. Uh, so if you open Homer without uh, uploading your own custom processing stream, uh, if I go to options here, you'll see the default. Uh, previously I'd done a video on the intensity to OD function. I'm now on the PCA filter. Uh, if you want just a general tiny bit of info about it, you just hover over your mouse and on the variable here, a little bit more in depth. Uh, here's where you're going to actually input your uh, variable. So if you want a slightly more in-depth view, if you go to Tools and Processing Stream GUI, uh, you come here. This is where you have all of the possible options to add and m maneuver around in your custom processing stream. Uh, this is the PCA filter that's used in the default uh, stream. Uh, down here, down below, you'll actually see a nice, nicely in-depth description. So you have your output right here, uh, the name of the filter, and then you have your input. Uh, down below, even further, you have a nice description of what each of these inputs are. So the Y is actually just your data. It's going to be, the rows are going to be the time points and the columns will be your channels. Uh, and it's indicated here, it's as described in the sd.mesh list. It's taken in the sd here. Uh, the sd is actually the struct in MATLAB. Uh, you have anything from the mesh list, there's the uh, manual pruning stuff in there, there's a lot of other options uh, all within that sd. Uh, below that you have the t inc, which is the time included. It's an array or a vector that basically has all of your time points and it's going to be binary. So if you have a 1, that time point will be included. If it's a 0, it will be not included. Uh, it mentions here it's useful for ignoring periods of time with strong artifacts. Uh, you could also use it if you have like a long uh, base, uh, too long of a baseline or a long rest period between the stimuli. Uh, you, if you don't want to include all of that in your data, you can weed that out by just basically manually e uh, editing these zeros in. Uh, the NSV is going to be how many components you want to uh, actually remove. And then your output, which is down here at the bottom, will be the filter data. Uh, your SVS, which is the singular value spectrum, which is part of the singular value decomposition uh, in the PCA. A uh, bunch of fun, wonderful math uh, that you can go much more in depth uh, from someone other than me. Uh, the NSV is going to also be your output. This is how many components were filtered from the data. So if you actually go back to where you input your numbers, you have these options. Uh, you have three different ways to uh, implement this. You can use one integer as your input. You can use two integers, or you can use a decimal, which will behave somewhat like a percentage. Uh, if you use one integer, uh, that number of components will be filtered from both wavelengths. So let's say I put a number 2, uh, or an integer 2. Uh, for wavelength 1, I will remove two components. For wavelength 2, I will also remove two components. If I put in two separate numbers, I will say 1 and 2. For wavelength 1, I will remove one component. For wavelength 2, I will remove two components. So it actually behaves, acts on each wavelength separately if you do two integers. If you use a decimal, it's basically asking for a percentage of variation. Uh, that is how much variation you are looking to remove from your data. So if you say 10%, I'm looking to remove 10% of variation from my data. It will remove however many components necessary in order to accomplish that goal. Um, all of that is wonderful and highly useful, but you also have the next function which we'll go over, which is motion artifacts, It'll be another video. Arguably may get the job done without the PCA filter. Uh, not, the, not the same function, they do do different things, they're quite similar, and the motion artifacts may satisfy what you're looking to do. Um, not saying it's not worth doing, but if I were to put one in for my PCA filter, more than likely what that's removing is going to be motion artifacts. So there's a, quite a bit of overlap there. Uh, anyway, I hope that was in-depth enough. Um, 
If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I actually have some notations on the code as well, which may be of some use. Um, and I'm happy to email those to anyone interested. You also, of course, uh, as with uh, any of the Homer work, you have access to the code yourself here. So that's going to be found in the uh, the Homer folder under ENPCA filter. To find it, it actually is a little difficult. You have to go to Packages, Easy Nears, and Processing, and you will find it right there. So anyway, I hope that helps, uh, and I'll be back shortly with another video. Thank you very much.